Welcome to Garden Wise Adventures. My name is Malie, and today we're going to embark on a project that should have been done weeks and weeks ago. Now, we're in my garden area, and I have a lot of seedlings that I had grown inside uh, for the fall harvest that never got planted for various reasons. You can watch my last video, which I'll post above, that kind of explains all my excuses, and they're just basically excuses. But anyway, let's look at those vegetables, see what they look like, and see where we're going to plant them. So here are my seedlings, some of them. We've got some beets that may or may not survive. Beets do not transplant well, and these have been in these pots for weeks and weeks. Um, they should have been transplanted out probably a couple of weeks after they first sprouted. But we'll see what happens. I have grown them for long enough that I don't want to waste them. Then we have our dinosaur kale and our curly kale. We have some kohlrabi, cabbages, and then a purple leaf kale. So what we are going to do is we are going to tear out all the irregular. Let me get my shadow out of the way. We're going to tear out the irregular out of this bed. We're going to take out the peppers, or at least most of them. We might leave one or two because I'm going to put a a hoop house over the top of this bed after I'm done planting. Now, the hoop house sh probably should have been done first, but the plants need to be planted immediately and I'm not quite ready for the hoop house yet. We're also going to leave the cherry tomato. My daughter and I have been really enjoying that. We're also going to leave the green onions. Now we're going to uh, prep three beds today and plant two of them. You can see some of my supplies up here and we'll go over those in a little while. But up here, we're going to take out all my cucumbers. We're going to take out the paprika peppers and just let the rest of them ripen inside. We're going to take out everything out of this bed. And this bed, we're going to put in some of, you know, about half of the kale, the cabbage, and the kohlrabi. And in the bed below, down at the bottom, we're going to put the other half of the kale, the cabbage and the kohlrabi, and we're going to do an experiment. We're going to build another hoop house down there. It's going to be a single layer hoop house. We're also going to use floating row cover over the crops. And in this bed, we're going to, I don't know if you can see down here, but we've built this bed so that it can have a second layer. We're going to build the second layer for this hoop house in a little bit and see which one works better. Now we do have pretty cold winters here in Utah. We're in zone five and I'm not sure how much we can actually grow over the winter. I've never done that before. This hoop house here, I built it in the spring and used it to have, get an early start on some of my plants. So, it'll be really interesting to see what we can grow and if a single hoop house, if a single layer hoop house is enough or if we're going to need that double layer. So let's get to it, tear out these beds and see if we can get the planting done today. Okay, well you would think that cleaning up three garden beds wouldn't be such a big deal, but I still must not have healed completely from my illness because I am absolutely beat. You know, all I've done so far is tear out the vegetation, harvest what we had left, and of course I forgot to hit the play on the video camera, so I am sorry about that. So anyway, the planting is going to wait till tomorrow. Amending the beds is going to wait till tomorrow, but let me show you what we did harvest and what the beds look like right now. So I did tear out all of our paprika peppers. I harvested everything that was up to size and looked like it might ripen. Now I have had paprika peppers ripen from green in the past, so we'll see how they do. I've got cherry tomatoes quite a bit. A few little cucumbers. We had already done a big harvest today of cucumbers. And the last of my banana peppers. Now in this bed I left one banana pepper. I cut the toma cherry tomato back a lot so that I could fit the hoop house over the top. And we have our bunching green onions. The rest of this is going to be the uh, cabbage and kale. Now, this bed was amended recently, so all I'm going to do is add a little fertilizer to it. We pulled the cucumbers and all of the peppers out of this bed. 
it's still a little bit of a mess and it has not been amended for a while. We're going to be adding some of the raised bed mix, some peat moss, and some vermiculite that is down at the bottom and we'll talk about that tomorrow when I get to bed amending. This bed also needs to be amended. We got everything out of it. The hoop house will uh, probably stay in this bed. Now these hoop houses they are secured down with rebar, but it's not hard to undo it. Um, I can move these beds really easily. Uh, dismantling them is not going to be a big deal either. So if I decide to move this to another bed, that's not a big deal. So it's the next day. I'm feeling a lot better, a lot more rested, and we're ready to start amending the beds. Now the first bed that I emptied out has already been amended with a planting bed mix, peat moss and vermiculite. The only thing left is to add a little bit of nitrogen. Now most soils in Utah have plenty of phosphorus, plenty of potassium, plenty of iron. All of those nutrients are available. Now this is a planting bed mix. It's not regular garden soil. So I will need to continuously add nutrients. I think the only nutrient I need right now because it does have compost in it is nitrogen. So let's go ahead and I'll show you what I add for nitrogen. There are many different forms of nitrogen that you can add. You can add ammonium sulfate, you can add urea. Those nitrogen sources, they call them, you know, like the synthetic and they are synthetic sources of nitrogen. But what that means is it's already broken down into a, into a form that the plants can use. And they're perfectly fine to use. They do not sterilize the soil. They do not kill the soil microbes or anything. It's a faster way of getting nitrogen to your plants because as I said it's in a form that the plants can already utilize. Now I'm going to use blood meal. Um, I've used urea, I've used ammonium sulfate in the past. Um, the reason, you know, I guess there's no real reason to use blood meal over those. This is an organic method and it does need to be broken down by soil microbes before the plants can use it but blood meal is broken down really quickly. And you can tell that it's got nitrogen as the main ingredient because the first number is a high number. That first number is a nitrogen, then comes a potassium and phosphorus. So let's add some blood meal to the soil, mix it in and it'll be ready to plant. Okay, so I'm just gonna take several handfuls of the blood meal, spread it over the surface of the soil. And then just to mix it in, I'm just going to use my garden fork, being very careful not to pierce my drip lines like I do normally. So let's get that mixed in. I think we have this ready to plant. The pepper and the tomato, I don't know exactly how long those are going to last. Uh, this is going to be the hoop house that only has a single covering over the top. We'll get them to last as long as possible, but once those go, um, that's going to be it for this area. I think I'll probably sprinkle some lettuce seedlings around just to see if I can get some germination on those. And then once we pull out the tomato and the peppers, we'll have a little bit of lettuce. The bunching onion should last the whole time. Then we've got, we're going to do three of the curly leaf kale, one of the uh, red kales, those are the more hardy ones. We've got our dinosaur kale in the center, it gets quite tall. And then we've got our cabbage and our kohlrabi, we've got three of each. So we'll see how these go and let's get them planted. Now, as you can see, these are not very root bound. They look really good. At least this kale does. We're going to check the other ones and see how they look. But I'm just going to mess up the root system a little bit. Dig a hole, stick it right in.
Yeah, these don't look too bad either. We're just going to mess it up a little bit. They've been in the pots for quite some time. Okay, so it's all watered in and planted. Let's move on to the next one. Now this is the bed where we had our cucumbers and paprika peppers. We cleaned this out completely. This is where we're going to put our garlic for the year. Now, um, I've done a different video on planting garlic. I will link that at the top. And in the interest of time, I'm not gonna show you how I plant the garlic, but I will show you how I'm gonna amend the bed. This bed, the last time it was amended was last year when I put compost in it. So this year we're going to add just a little more of the raised bed mix. That is basically compost. We're going to add some peat moss. And now I'm going to link another video at the top here that shows you about soil amendments and why I use what I'm going to be using. Um, the peat moss holds water a lot better. Now I've always when I've planted, when I've amended my beds, added peat moss, vermiculite, and compost, about a third of each. But the last, you know, probably two or three years, I have neglected the peat moss and the vermiculite. And this year was the first year I've had to water every day by hand. But normally I've been able to get away with my drip system watering three times a week. So the peat moss and the vermiculite are absolutely necessary to be able to hold water. So that's what we're gonna be adding to this bed right now. So now here we have the vermiculite. And as I explained in my last video about soil amendment, the one that I'm linking at the top here, there's a couple of different types of material that you can add that are like vermiculite. There's perlite, which I think is best for pots. In planting beds like this, the perlite tends to float to the top. Um, vermiculite stays mixed in. It swells as it, uh, takes in the water, you know, it absorbs the water, swells up, and then it slowly releases the water. And that's why it helps, helps you water less in your planting beds. So we're gonna add a bit of this. Next is the peat moss. Peat moss also helps aid in holding water. So we're gonna mix all those together and then mix it in. Now this bed is pretty full, so we're just going to add a little bit of the compost. This is mostly compost anyway, as it is. So we'll just add a little bit of that. Then we'll mix it all together and stir it into the soil. So it looks like we've got everything planted. I planted the beets in between the cabbages and the kohlrabi because, well, I don't expect them to survive. And if they do survive, they're not going to really form bulbs. Uh, they are transplanted too late, but I raised them inside for so long, I don't want to waste them. We've got the kale in the center, the dinosaur kale in the center because it's the tallest. I took everything in a little bit further because this is the bed where we're going to uh, do the double layer. Now this hoop house is easy to lift up. Underneath here it's hooked to some rebar so it's easy to push up and down and adjust the sizes. And so we should be able to put that second layer in 
shortly. I would have preferred to do it before I planted, but I'm not going to be able to put the second hoop house up till midweek and I didn't want the plants to wait any longer. So thank you for coming along with me on this adventure. I'm hoping things will grow and look forward to the next video where I'm gonna create my uh, second hoop house and put the second layer on the first hoop house. So uh, if you like my videos, like and subscribe and go have a wonderful garden adventure.